Welcome to the second event of uh, Student Meet 2001. It's organized by the students at Center for Education, Innovation and Action Research. Uh, most of you are familiar with the event now. This is an annual event that was started last year with an objective to create a space for students to discuss themes that concerns them, come together as a community to support each other and also find ways in which we can learn from each other's work and experience. Uh, so based on that, uh, today's first session is a workshop on presenting research methodology of a thesis or research paper, which has its own challenges. For that, we have Dr. Anusha Ramanathan with us. She's part of the center and most of the students here are familiar with her. Uh, so Anusha has more than a decade of teaching experience at UG and PG levels. She teaches MA English, mass media, MBA students across colleges of University of Mumbai and autonomous colleges. Uh, she works, she worked as a research assistant, course coordinator, content writer, editor, teacher trainer, corporate trainer through her career. Further, she also tutors students for competitive exams. She co-leads a uh, teacher professional development uh, team uh, implement and implementation for clicks, and she's part of the English team. She teaches language education, assessment and academic skills courses across MA education, B.Ed. M.Ed., MA education for teacher educators from Afghanistan. She also designs, develops and facilitates language education, mentoring courses for reflective teaching with ICT. She further conducts research in areas of language and teacher education. Her expertise lies in English language teaching, English literature, assessment and evaluation, technology-based learning and teacher professional development, and a lot more. <laughs> so her current work focuses on her attention, like I'll finish on a short <laughs> attention on research, uh, online and distance education, teacher professional development, language teaching, policy and practice, technology enabled learning and assessment. Uh, it's such a pleasure to work with her and all of her students also. She's very approachable and uh, she's helped in a lot of academic reading and writing, which is a core skill required to becoming a researcher and academician. She's always been helpful and been willing to take time out for that with students. So with that, I welcome Anusha to take over the session. Thank, thank you, Vimaya, for that very, very generous uh, introduction. I must say a lot of my work cannot happen without the support of uh, a lot of people at work and of friends and uh, who critique and who give advice, etc. So research can be a lonely place. It is very important that we um, reach out, share, uh, conference presentations help us understand, get feedback. Uh, listening to other people getting feedback helps us refine our own uh, you know, ways of writing and presenting. So I would encourage everyone to also think through, uh, do you want to, you know, conferences that you would like to attend, present, share um, these kinds of meets. And I must commend uh, Ekta, uh, especially Ekta, but also the core team of Gita, Imaya, Ananya, and all of the others who have been involved in, uh, by, in imagining this together. And also imaginations very often stay in the realms of fantasy, but you have actualized it and Congratulations on your second year of doing it. So yes, Soham and um, the MA education student uh, in, the, in that field, yes, Soham also, definitely. So congratulations to all of you. And of course, to the Deepa and Pratima who did support from the back. So yes, all that. But um, uh, it's really a pleasure to be a part of this and I would hope that we can have an interactive session. Uh, I am going to share my screen. I am really outlining and today problematizing and uh, 
evolving certain things that you may have to keep in mind for a research methodology chapter. Um, very often when we think of research methods, we'd say, huh, this is one slide, right? Like we presented mixed methods, sampling is this technique, and then what else do you write? And the question, that is the question we would like to answer today. And if you have questions, if you have your own doubts, please do ask. I'll definitely take you through some aspects of what the chapter should look like. But first, let's begin with something that is the research flow. And to a large extent, a lot of our research is just very clearly answering certain basic questions. And I always say, think about those five questions, of the five questions of the W, five Ws and the six H. How? The what is very important for you to look out in terms of what is your topic. The why is important for you to state what is the relevance of your topic and your research questions, like which, what is the scope of work you're going to do, must be very clearly laid out. So I want to research education, but I can't research everything. So then I will say, I want to research online education. But then what in online education? There is so much available. Is it synchronous online education? Is it, you know, uh, asynchronous um, no i want to research on uh, you know things that are available as courses okay will they be MOOCs? will they be run as courses within departments uh, will they be for students who are going to be learning something on whatsapp and something in a google classroom what is the context is it urban is it rural if i am laying out the scope and the limitation of my topic, that is what my chapter one would be on. Also to explain why that would be important. The literature review would of course state what the experts say, but uh, yes, thanks Imaya, definitely. And the literature review would definitely talk about what the experts say. And if you are challenging something conventional, then also why and what you disagree with and what are the uh, other sources of information that support you. So you're basically arguing your case, right, with the literature review as to why this is relevant. What are these points? Where is the concept coming from? Um, when you imagine this concept, is it only your imagination or does someone else has shared this through the ages, but especially current, right? Because thoughts change, perspectives change. And so where are the gaps that you may plug in? Or if you are going to uh, use the same kind of uh, research that is already available, then why is the duplication required? Why is, maybe it is not replicated in your context. So uh, there could be someone who wants to talk about uh, the impact of parks in, uh, you know, recreational play as a re place on the uh, community spirit and you are doing this for the first time in say Orissa and the reason there has been five other researchers done maybe in America in Britain in India also maybe in Bangalore and <clears throat> you want to find out why you're doing this in Orissa you may say well I want to know whether there's a cultural difference and impact that is there so you need to have argued that point in your literature review to have created the space and where are the experts coming in from, where are the gaps. And then we come to this research methodology. And the research methodology just is a simple question. It just asks you, so you had those research questions in the first top, in the first chapter. How are you going to go about finding those answers to those questions? And the one aspect of the how is not just to explain it, and we'll come there, but also to identify other elements that you may want to look at. But primarily, the research methodology answers the question, how did I find my answers? How did I go about finding the answers? Data analysis is what are my answers, right? Like what are the findings and why and how do they relate to the research question in, in a way, what answers relate in that sense. And 
of course, chapter five is confusion and saying, so what is that I found interesting? How is it interesting? Why is it interesting? And what, is, what does interesting mean in terms of the answers to the questions, relevance to the field? And what can be done next, perhaps? What were the limitations? What could be you know, overcome in another session, section, whatever? But those will be the largely the research flow. If you agree, disagree, or you have other comments on it, please share. Uh, but this is where the overall flow comes in from. And it's not very complex in that sense. You're basically telling a story, you're telling a story of you beginning with a dream and telling about what you did to find others who could help you realize the dream to identifying the pathway to realize and walk the dream, and then talking about the walk towards that dream, and then stating, how do you feel now that you have reached your destination? That is basically what the research flow is about, right? Uh, yes, so my question to you, as I said, this would be interactive is why do we have an entire chapter on research methodology? Why can't we just, you know, compress it and uh, identify? Why do you think there is an entire chapter on methods? Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, yeah. So uh, what I feel is uh, because uh, the methodology we adopt to study a topic, uh, that has a lot of implications for what kind of results we come up with. Uh, so uh, I do uh, remember reading somewhere uh, over time as to how uh, different methodologies, uh, adopting different methodologies towards the same topic yielded uh, very different views and very different uh, aspects of the uh, topic. So maybe that could be. So in, that's a good point that the methodology affects results and it is a guideline for the whole dissertation. Uh, when you say guideline, Bhagyashri, and uh, as you're talking about it in terms of methodology, uh, why, why would then there be an entire chapter on it? I mean, you could just, of course, the methodology affects the results so i will explain the method and leave it at that i could have done it in the literature review section i could have done it in the data analysis chapter and preluded my data analysis with research methods what will i write in a research methods chapter if methodology affects results then what would i write Hi, Anusha. Hey. The justification for why this methodology? Yes. Why? But even before, yes, absolutely. The justification for the why the methodology. But even before that, you may actually want to revisit uh, some elements of your research questions and talk about what uh, the research questions are trying to do in terms of the elements. So yes, you are right in saying that you will justify your research methods. And the way that you may justify your research method is to revisit your research questions, because why have you selected a particular research method? So a simple question for um, all of you is, can you give me a sample of research questions that you may think of, whatever they are, you know, let's just, what would you like to research in terms of it? And we just play around with that. So anyone of you and all of you can type, we just revisit some of the research questions, uh, look at the research question. It doesn't have to be polished. This is just experiment. It could be anything. Thank you. 
Uh, hi, ma'am. Can you please yeah. repeat the question? I lost what you. any any research question that you think anything that you would you think can you would like to research, or can be researched. Let me give you an example. Why why uh, cats are so adored on this campus? <laughs> that could be a research question. For those of you who have not yet visited this campus, be warned. <laughs> So. Uh huh. Okay. So I'm going to take a few and push them out here, and uh, okay. Thank you, Mira. Uh, yes. So, if you are trying to answer these questions, um, are low cost and these are questions that you think are low cost schools better than you know government schools? Now, if I have this research question, I would have already had certain sub questions, right? Like everyone here is like in teaching learning, is it? Okay. So. Um, how are low cost private budget schools better than government schools can you just answer that uh, how, what what are the problem areas that you will have to have defined out here when you look at this question um, maybe the learning outcomes okay you would have also had to define what you mean by low cost you would have had to define and this would have come in the literature review already you would have had to define what you mean by private this would have also come in your literature review private budget schools if you're talking about them you would have had to define what is government schools this would have also come in your uh, literature review why are these important is because obviously when i'm using this as a low cost government school in the sense can i be doing this as an all india sample at an individual level yes i mean just different at different areas right would i have explained that somewhere in my first chapter also perhaps saying that this is the scope is maybe maharashtra maybe maharashtra urban maybe uh, you know maharashtra and uh, mumbai and delhi and those kinds but again there would i be looking at all the schools no i have a particular subset so you are now going to be looking at the population in terms of the entire range that you have you're going to then define that population much better and then you're going to then say that i'm going to take from there a sample you can do a whole population study as well but governments generally do that not individuals so you would take a sample and now you will have to be defining that sample and that is where your you start looking at why this sample it won't just be enough to say so what kind of sampling technique could you use most of you i think have done something with research methods so can you tell me any kind of sampling technique you would use survey method that's the method that's not the sampling <laughs> technique survey could be used that's a method random would you survey sampling. everyone okay random sampling uh snowball sorry uh ma'am snowball sampling yes snowball is what you said right yeah what do you yeah yeah you could also do purposive you could be looking at it as purposive where you want to identify three uh, stratified yes simple random and stratified as pointed out 
And why would you use, I mean, obviously there are all these different kinds of types that are there. And stratified is what uh, would be a kind where you're looking at, you know, the premium schools or premium areas. Again, you will have to define whether they are premium areas that you're stratifying them by, you know, classifying them by, or is it the socio is it the socioeconomic status? Is it the um, is it their you know performance in a national achievement survey exam? Is it the population size of that school? Is it the infrastructure facilities available in those schools? Is it the equity ratio in that school? All of these become then minor aspects that you will be looking at. Do you understand how then this becomes a larger portion of ideas that you are then looking at in every single point there is a decision point. You are in this chapter expected to have explained all these varied factors and decision points and said why you took that decision. It could be that you took stratified sampling because you wanted to look at the top 10 performing schools, the middle average performing schools and the least performing schools. That is how you did it. Or you could be looking at uh, schools in better off areas, socioeconomic students, uh, socioeconomic status of the students is much better. And so, so socioeconomic students uh, is very poor. And uh, in, in some of the other areas, and you're looking at those aspects where every, given everything else, the socioeconomic status is looked at. And then you're figuring out whether the uh, low cost private budget schools really help those really underprivileged or is it that the government schools help them uh, vis-a-vis the ones where there is a socioeconomic status. That could be where your learning outcome is coming from. Um, you could, and, and so these are aspects and perspectives that you have already somewhere explored in your chapter one and already justified and researched and commented on in your literature review that you will now have to connect to in your research methods. You can't suddenly in your research method introduce socioeconomic status as a stratified data sampling method. It would have to have been justified somewhere in the relevance that you stated in chapter one. It would have had to be somewhere a part of the purpose that you had explained yourself in chapter one and researched a bit in chapter two in terms of looking at the socioeconomic status and how socioeconomic status plays a role or it could be the infrastructure, or it could be whatever, but you should have already built an argument for this method choice. So it is not just that the method, uh, the research method is a guideline for the dissertation. The research method, in fact, follows a certain purpose that you have already established. And you can't suddenly switch gears and say, huh, I used stratified because socioeconomic. Where was socioeconomic in the first two chapters? This is the middle chapter of your thesis. Was it there earlier? That is a question that we will ask when we are evaluating research. So that, that aspect has to be very clear. Another is to also link and say why this method. For instance, right now, all of you gave four, I mean, very quickly gave uh, answers and, and gave three, four different kinds of varieties. Um, obviously, any one of these will suit. The question is, why did you choose this one? And that has to be justified. So why would you use purpose? I, I gave a lot of information on stratified. So why would you choose purpose? What is purposive? Anyone who uh, doesn't know can also state and comment. What do you think by purposive? Uh, purpose. Oh. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Purpose of sampling is basically uh, you choose a sample based on uh, what you intend to dis uh, research, but that's a very generic uh, definition. I could explain with an example. Sure. Uh, um, 
suppose uh, if you are uh, want to say for example uh, we are considering the same question are low cost budget budget schools better than government schools uh, then you choose to uh, per- when you choose the purposive method then you sort of uh, say that i will be uh, studying this in the city of mumbai in this particular area uh and uh, y- you know say that you know this is the po- you know for example if we're looking at the diversity in the population and you say that there are different economic classes in residing in the same place uh then I, hence this is an in- interesting case and hence i will be looking at a uh, different d- different schools yes absolutely you could look do that you could be doing purposive sampling because uh, of convenience there is convenience sampling also that is there yes familiarity and access uh, you could be looking at it because um, you are told to do that uh, in a sense that this is uh, there is no sampling there is an evaluation study of a particular program so that comes in there so that could be aspect snowball is um, again something where you are recruiting subjects that similar but con- it's similar to convenience but uh, yeah or the sample of the population has not been studied before imaya you're right it could be for various reasons but you realize that even as you're giving reasons for why you would use purposive or convenience or snowball snowball is basically recruiting um, subjects from people whom you know so it becomes a snowball like you uh, talk to your friend and your friend talks to their friend and their friend talks to their friends and you get all of them to come in and uh, you know uh, be a part of your research uh, it would be snowball it's part of your convenience sampling actually but these could be various reasons there could be reasons such as i tried doing official channels i couldn't get it so i chose this route it could be that i i had no time and uh, therefore it was this route i needed consent no one else gave consent so i did this route what were the reasons for your choice where they b- based on limitations of your ability to conduct research of the um situation that you were in in order to conduct research for instance covid-19 has become a huge challenge in research methods and in the recent thesis that every one of us is reading or even if you are going to journals and you are reading those research papers you will find that everyone has talked about their research method as changed because of a situation like covid-19 so that could be the reason why you chose certain methods or it could be that you know you you uh, just found it cheaper it was much more not just accessible but it was also more expensive to do the other route so there could be various reasons those reasons need to be explained in this chapter and that is what the chapter is really about so at every stage the decisions you made and why you took that route uh another thing that you will have to look at is we'll come to the tools part but another thing that you would have to look at is also figure out uh not just the choice of the technique uh of course the reasons why you chose them but also are they conventional are they recommended uh you know is this the best way or is was this a compromise and that is a very important aspect uh was this the best recommended decision now how will you know whether it was uh, the best for you in that sense i think that's depend that depends on so many factors isn't it like if you so i i would say familiarity with the research method itself for example ethnography or something if one has uh, engaged in before one would sort of even choose the research questions in order to do that kind of a study so it's not everybody chooses the same thing the second thing would be that 
um, uh, if the research question uh, requires a certain kind of study because other methods have been used and they have not dwelled into certain aspects and this sort of a method would help uh, tell us something more about it. So for example, if a certain community has always been studied through survey methods and other things, but uh, we don't really know about the ways of living of a community, then ethnography would be more suitable for a study like that to talk about more about the population and the humane aspect or highlight what the people really are and their life. So depends yes. on the Yes, Sekta, absolutely. And the point that you made, just to clarify, when you say that it is because of the familiarity that I have with the research method, that will not be acceptable as a justification because the person whoever it is, will say that that is what you're supposed to study. You are supposed to learn about research methods and adopt the best possible method. So you could talk about access. You could talk about uh, uh, affordability uh, because that is a concern. Uh, you could talk about, for instance, there are times when people will say, but you've not accessed the best research journal. And uh, there are, I mean, TIS definitely allows for a lot more journals, but there are other universities where you don't really get access to good journals, re relevant journals or recent journal articles. So genuinely, those will be uh, decisions that you talk about and say, well, I couldn't because, you know, it was expensive on my own. And this, uh, these libraries that I could access did not have uh, you know, did not give me uh, access to those kinds of relevant literature or recent literature in that sense. And so you do have people from rural areas, rural universities, where sometimes it is not as accessible and they're not able to, they would have had to travel out to access journals and they said they can't. So it, even on literature review, we ask those kinds of questions. So familiarity uh, is your familiarity with the method cannot be a justification, so, but all uh, the rest that you said, yes. So I, this is interesting that you pointed out because I was thinking about it in two ways. So, um, I mean, I feel there are two ways to talk about this entire thing. One is that, um, how do you justify the method to yourself as a researcher? Uh, and the other thing is, what is the justification that you put outside in the world uh, to the community of practitioners, right? So yeah. uh, if ethnography is something that you're familiar with and you've decided to do, and it takes years and years of understanding and even uh, like practicing it actually in the field. Um, mm -hmm. And if, if that is the kind of method that uh, one wants to pursue, one will find ways to reason with it and uh, put it out there in the world. But for one's own understanding and acceptance that this is the method I want to take, I think there's a conversation that happens with the method with the researcher himself or herself as well. Um, so I True. I, I, I agree that you may be partial to a method. Uh, you may be more uh, keen to, for instance, if you're from a science background, you may be more keen on quantitative methods. If you are from humanities, you may have more of a qualitative aspect uh, that you are partial to. But the question will arise, and this is where the research question to the, uh, you know, the, the choice and the connect between the research question to the methodology is important. This uh, kind of a diagram to a large extent must be drawn. Your partiality to a particular methodology should have informed your research question. So if I'm looking at ethnographic studies or qualitative research, to a large extent, what is quantitative would be uh, where I am looking at questions which are <coughs> sorry, observable, measurable, right? They need to be measurable. So my question should have measurable. They can't just be... Uh, uh, observable in that sense, because observable actually comes, I'll just take that out. Observable comes in both qualitative and quantitative. It is observed, yes, but it is observed in different ways. So it would have to be measurable. Uh, 
what would quality what would be the kind of questions that you would ask for measurable questions so for instance what is put out here as are they better in that sense is a measurable question i can measure it but it will really depend on how i define better for instance if i am talking about the same thing as what ajay put out as are they better my question of better would be is it learning outcomes or is it socio emotional learning now if it is socio emotional learning then my very similar question can be qualitative because my better is focused on an qualitative research so it is socio emotional impact uh support systems that the students have um you know something like what ananya uh, is researching in terms of the quality of uh, support in uh and and depression and avoiding depression and counseling etc so that they that could be the part there that i am talking about better so when we talk about better obviously this had to be research this word also influenced it now learning outcomes would not necessarily be a qualitative study so if you suddenly say i'm going to do interviews to tell me about learning outcomes there will be a problem ekta so it has to be that your research question has to be clear that it will support a particular methodology your research topic itself has to be clear that it will support a particular research methodology or in your literature review what you identified as the gaps for instance i may do a learning outcome in terms of a survey and there are multiple surveys that i can already use as my secondary data so what i am going to do is i'm going to try and see whether the beliefs of the students and the teachers is is mapping to the achievement score that they have so i then make it a belief question and i ask is the belief mapping to the uh, sir, you know achievement score and then i can justify an interview because beliefs by definition and the way that they are can of course be used in a qualitative uh, quantitative survey tool or anything of that sort but can also justify interviews as a method so it will have to be that kind of mapping yes go ahead so, no i agree with you and i feel like so um, going back to the conversation if one is biased towards a certain method um i agree that given the kind of broad question that you had earlier put out that are budget schools or government schools better so to speak uh, one would also sort of operationalize that question in a way uh, that lends to that method that one is yes. pursue right one would not yes. sort of uh, just make a quantitative question uh, and go and do ethnography for sure that is not possible uh, so i feel like the way that one starts operationalizing the question and one's understanding of the research question develops over a period of time is also sort of a dialectic between the method as well as the question correct uh, so absolutely which is why you will have to revisit your research question in this chapter because uh, this chapter you may actually have to go back and revise your research question uh, you may want to write a sub question for something that you are finding you may want to say that uh, because ultimately you're writing a thesis after you've completed your chapter so no one said that every single question that you started out with has to be as is there is development research is learning and so you may have to go and retweak the words the wording of your question to map and justify uh, the research method uh yeah at this as a topic but even in the topic um you would when you're talking about the topic it is basically laying out the scope so when you lay out the scope are you really uh, laying out the scope from a uh, operationalized quantitative method or not has to be clear and it can't suddenly be a surprise for the reader think of the reader the reader has read your first chapter the reader is reading your second chapter and the third chapter suddenly you are like where is this going 
so suddenly you are giving me a crossroad as to what am i supposed to do you have given me something that is very very um, quantifiable and suddenly told me that you're going to use a qualitative research method for it and i'm like why so you need to keep that reader engaged and if you have even if you do decide to do the qualitative aspect you need to have explained why is that the best choice and in this case there will again be references so do not think that just literature review may ho gaya and that is done here again you will use books refer to books that use research methods doing research is one of them uh, or others there are so many research methods books you will refer to them and try and cull from them quotes or uh, justifications or anything of that sort to help you argue your case of why this method so that is what this paper and this i mean this chapter really would deal with and this also applies to a paper even if you're writing a journal paper your paper should have given this now this is much more easier if you are doing what is conventional conventional expected uh, you know a particular question of our schools better than government it is a certain kind of uh, stratification is expected so you do that and you explain it much more quickly the more unconventional your method is the more explanation you do need to give to explain to the reader why you chose this method and to get them along with you on the journey that is where this case would be then based on the method and the technique and the population you have you could have your tools now why would the tools depend on your sample and not vice versa this would be your tools right a survey or you could have interviews was another thing that you guys said again what kind of interviews phone interviews in person interviews you will have to state that based on your sample your sample size might be you know 100 you possibly can't do that with 100 teachers interviews with 100 teachers so then you will justify saying that the size did not allow for it so i chose survey to get everyone's understanding and then i did a 10% of it interviews then where is the 10% coming from or maybe i did not do interviews or maybe i reduced my sample size because i wanted to do interviews so again here if you are if you have decided that your tool is going to be interviews then you may want to define the convenient sampling or you may want to define your sample size even better and you may say i had to limit my scope of the sample that i could collect the because you know i had this time this limitation and this was the method i was going to use in order to and justify your method like ekta had pointed out that it could be that surveys gave learning outcomes but did not really say how those learning outcomes uh, came to be or what was the benefit of those learning outcomes so then uh, that that was perceived by the learner in that sense all those kinds of questions can only be asked in an interview or a focus group discussion or something of that sort so you can then argue for those cases but that should have been also explained so you will have to do this revisiting of research question mapping it each time and explaining them in a uh, different way uh, of connecting it to your tools connecting it to your methods uh, the qualitative quantitative in that sense does this help uh, explain what Mm. Uh, Anusha, just a question. Also, that could you also highlight the uh, appropriateness of the tools? Uh, because you mentioned interestingly how the tools should be based on your sample size as well, um, and how uh, the tools should also be designed in a way that are culturally appropriate, or uh, in the sense that they. I'm I'm falling short of the word, but 
how they should be appropriate for the participants to sort of speak what they actually want to speak or express um you know so that the tools themselves do not become a limitation for them yes. to um to actually give us the data that or whatever the thing is you know collection of data correct so to the last uh, to to your point the basic thing that this chapter would have also asked you to do is other than saying i chose this but also explain did you have a bias so for instance ek you pointed out that you have uh, you know you would like qualitative research so that is a kind of bias it comes through uh, just see whether that can be avoided or it can be explained right you could justify and especially in this and humanities and social sciences you can justify your position and you can say that this is why i wanted to find out in this manner you can do that i wanted to find out because i believe that people do not and and you can quote other research for that and say that they do not write honest answers in surveys that they blindly tick mark or anything of that so and i wanted to do this face to face interaction a quantitative person will tell you that the person in front of you could be lying you have a limited number of people it is not allowing you to generalize and that is the researcher bias that is a belief system also that comes in and they could, that has to be explained in some way that that should be articulated somewhere right that this is where you come from this is your position on this kind of research the sampling bias is basically on the si side that it may be because of circumstances it could be that you you know had to limit yourself to um because of convenience you had to limit yourself to a particular area or a particular school in terms of access or affordability and that could there could be a limitation there as a result of being generalizable to the general population there could be participant bias for instance the tools that you use are and this is where the participant bias comes in the tools you use are the ones that actually are convenient for people or not convenient for people so let me give you an example based on my own research and uh, i did a pilot study uh, where i was actually wanting to do this talk aloud okay so the method is that as the teacher is assessing it was an assessment as the teacher is assessing the teacher also verbalizes uh, what the teacher is thinking as she is correcting the papers and the idea was to record it and uh, then uh, you know see whether the thoughts over a period of time changed and what the change would deal with and whether the marks reflected the initial impression the final impression or were a averaging of these in that sense that was the idea that's a lovely interesting study that i wanted to do except my teachers were not ready to do that they were ready to uh, talk about it post the evaluation or talk about their evaluation process pre evaluation but during evaluation they did not want to talk they did not want to get recorded and so your tool may have to change because the participant does not like that method so then you may do a post interview instead of doing the talk aloud you may ask them can you at least write a comment and some of them said no we don't want we that's not how we follow so uh some of them did so you also have these kinds of other aspects of how your tool will have to be i had to discard the tool entirely and come up with another kind of a strategy to understand how assessment gets done with a pre and post interview in that sense these are some these are problems that you will face you may want to conduct an interview participant does not want to meet you face to face so you have to rely on telephonic interview so you still do the interview but you're now relying on telephone they they don't have time to meet you face to face now as a result of a telephonic interview there is more chances of disturbance 
more chances of you not catching the lie it is not truly observing the person and figuring out their body language in that sense or you could be that you didn't have i mean people did not want you want to do a focus group discussion this is a this is also something that has happened to us uh in research where uh, you want to do a focus group discussion and then uh you realize that students are never going to be open and honest if there are other students around to talk about their institution because they don't know whether uh, they will get into trouble so then you change your tool from a focus group discussion say i want to research on this uh, campus um, uh, affordances okay and then i go around and say focus group discussion all of you come together there are some 15 people let's do this and and i realize that no one is being honest because uh, they are just agreeing with whatever the group leader whoever the group leader is saying and uh, then you have to change your method uh, you have to change your tool to interviews maybe i so that would have to be something that you would have to think about in terms of participant bias you may not be able to conduct a google form survey in um, in uh in a remote area where there is no internet connectivity so then your tool will have to explain how you accommodated the participants that's not participant bias that is the uh, you know you had a problem in terms of it there could be ethical considerations uh for instance this irb does not allow you to uh focus on uh, to to share videos or photographs of students especially children uh yes rashmi i will re explain the researcher bias uh but there could be ethical considerations where i want to uh, you know uh talk to a child uh, or talk to the parent but now i have a problem i don't want to i don't want my questions to create a fight in the family um so questions and and this is actually become and uh, this was an interesting thing that a student of mine was doing was looking at aspirations parents have for their child and that's a nice question to ask and whether that affects the career choice that the child makes um you know the child has made to go into science 10th to 11th choosing science or commerce in that sense all right and um the the students was like asking father separately and the father separately and then as a family and the problem was that the mother and the father had very different aspirations and and this was in two three family cases had very different aspirations and the method was that you would have an interview with the mother separately with the father separately and then as a family problem was that the mother and father had not really shared this different aspirations with i mean they were not in sync in that sense and uh, it was going to create a fight you knew that there would be a fight in the family as a result of this now the choice that you have is do you still go ahead and research or do you do you not do that family interview do you drop them from your sample those are questions that you will have to think about so you may want to say that during your research there were certain kinds of problems that emerged that did not allow you to take a particular case you know because there was maybe um you know some of the you you sent out your survey to 25 people and maybe five of them filled the survey form incompletely so you drop them out that is one part which is a practical aspect the other is the ethical consideration of this kind where you know that your questions are going to lead to problems so or your method or your tool or your your process is going to lead to a problem so then do you drop out that particular person or do you drop out that entire method that you have will also depend on the uh, percentage of people who have a problem in this method in this case it was dropping out those three families 
in some other case it might be dropping out that method of jointly interviewing them and just writing about it and not you know creating a fight between them so those are kinds of things that you could have in addition to the irb listed ethical considerations um to talk about researcher bias rashmi really the researcher would have a bias towards a certain thing so for instance i'll give you an example um we often ask this question in interviews in this uh and doesn't matter which department we are from we often ask we often want to know uh your thoughts on privatization versus public funded institutions services you know um and we have this question to ask because there are people who will say that private is better and there are others who will say government is better and you have a bias there you have a bias already in terms of establishing that government schools are better or private schools are better so if that is a kind of bias that you're coming from you will have certain kinds of excuses that you make for the government schools if they turn out to be lower performers you may excuse them by saying they have fewer resources you may excuse them by saying that they cater to more underprivileged people you may excuse them with certain other aspirations now all of this is fine for you to do as long as you understand that it is coming from research and not your own thoughts not your own biases not your own position that says that government schools will be better or not from your position that says private schools will be better because you tend to then focus more or less on one or or explain more one aspect of your uh, finding and explain more uh, more the other aspect of your find uh, or explain more the other aspect of your finding that that will that will filter into this this researcher bias will percolate into data analysis so have you explained what assumptions you're coming with have you explained what is your you know in in the in paper 1 in sorry in chapter 1 itself you would have already established when you're talking about why it is relevant you have already established a point of view that you have now is the point of view interfering with your research with the tool you adopted with the sample size you adopted with the participants uh, that you accepted with the ethical considerations you gave has this assumption this bias somewhere in impacted and it won't be something that uh, needs long explanation all these others will require long explanations researcher bias is much more subtle it comes from the words you choose the mm, you know things like the best way for instance what ekta pointed out as you know interviews will be better than surveys uh was it your opinion or was it somewhere also for this research question was it has it is there any evidence that interviews will be better than surveys that is the question that you would have to address the researcher bias can come in the way that you choose sample size the researcher bias can come in the way so one of the questions we often ask in interview in when you present is why did you choose this method and the moment you tell us that we know whether it was because it was the best method possible or whether it was your opinion that was there and your opinion honestly is not going to be uh, it it can it can influence but it should not be the one that decides what the thing is so that would be those factors you know that can it can come in anywhere it can actually come in in a lot of places 
for instance your participant bias i, I will say that sampling bias uh, is somewhere the sample size that you choose in the sample to population you choose is also researcher bias in a lot of research people will choose a lot more women uh, teachers than male teachers simply because you want to find that uh, you know you want to identify uh, equity or inclusion it, it's fine it's all right to have a researcher bias uh, as long as you position it properly and explain and justify it properly yeah uh, yeah yeah ekta that is fine i gave that as an example to say that there are people who do i mean uh, it's not just uh, it's it's about the fact that there will be a lot of people who actually say that it is better like not just interview so there will be others the reverse is also true there could be people who say survey is better right so have you explained that as a concept that uh, comes in so you will have to identify whether your questions uh, kind of verify yeah yeah uh whether your questions verify and lend themselves to quantifiable quantitative message or whether they lend themselves to qualitative ones and you will have to figure out whether they are you know this is observable uh, in to a large extent this will be observable and uh, you will have to find whether uh what is the method that will suit where it could be used etc you can also of course talk about mixed methods now this is something that is the what is the word to use it is like people students think that it is the fail proof method why बिकॉज हम तो सब कुछ दे रहे हैं क्वान्टिटेटिव भी दे रहे हैं क्वालिटेटिव भी दे रहे हैं question then comes as did you choose it because you were like I want I mean this is a fail proof method or did you choose it because it answers research questions is it important to use mixed methods is a question and if your research questions don't have mixed methods elements in them then there is a problem so that is why i was asking this question as to what are the questions that you will have with quantitative and quantitative questions are generally what the qualitative questions are generally the why and how okay now this does not mean that you cannot quantify why you could quantify why but you can quantify how as well but largely the why and how questions are what really will lend themselves to qualitative research so are you asking those questions or are you asking only the what questions are your sub questions at least asking more about why the inner beliefs or the thoughts or processes or are they just looking at what are the processes what are the beliefs what are the uh, outcomes is is the question what in that sense and that will be something that you will have to think about now if you have both questions then you it is justified that you use a mixed methods if you don't have both those types of questions then the question arises why are you using mixed methods and that is a question that is asked in defense in thesis presentation etc as to why you chose this method we we love asking that question so why you chose this method and uh, you will have to be able to justify it with relation to your research question every time uh ya yeah, mera uh, it will measure qualitative it will depend so for instance when you talk about what okay so what i can i can measure what are beliefs what are the beliefs i can measure that right i can measure what are the processes i can talk about the processes ask them to list down the processes and state it but if i'm going to ask about when i say why it would be why do i hold this belief how 
how strong is my belief you know or or their belief uh, the participant belief uh how or in terms of processes it could be how do they uh do this work complete this process so the point is that even if you have a process question you could make it quantifiable um government surveys okay i want a process question on uh, teachers uh, i w- i want to know how teachers are teaching theek okay? hai i can't obviously do a qualitative research here because it will be taking too many resources what are the que- how will i phrase it i will ask whether how many times has the teacher come into class or what is the absenteeism rate i will ask what are the lesson plans you know are they all filed prior to lesson taking what is the frequency and the regularity of lesson planning i will ask what is the uh, you know what are the tools the teacher is using in the classroom regularly according to the lesson plan i will ask those kinds of questions and then talk about these are the processes these processes indicate quality of teaching and for that i would have had another secondary research justification and left it there theek hai kyunki government mein i need to collect data at a large scale most of the questions will be what so everything becomes a what question in that sense but now i want to know how do they feel about it <laughs> or how do they implement it now here i will have to go and research in terms of observing interviewing more why and how in that sense you get how that how it could be limited to quantitative or limited to qualitative or i could do both i can do and this is generally what students might do i could ask what are the processes of the school leadership and then i can ask how do the teachers implement those processes of the teachers in interviews so then i will use a mixed method but does my research question have that does the aim of my research that i stated in chapter 1 ask for that if if for instance ajay's question was are low cost private budget schools better than government schools in terms of learning outcomes only do i need to go to the school i can just look at the survey records i don't need to interview them and i can just identify them look at the national achievement scores that all the students have had do a cumulative average look at all of that be done with my thesis because that's my question are the learning outcomes and this question has to be better refined if someone is writing it of course i mean that's a different process altogether but obviously our better than government schools with respect to learning outcomes that should have been the entire question right because better could have multiple connotations so are they better than government schools with respect so here i don't need to do my qualitative at all why would i do mixed methods also i will just use quantitative if it is learning methods <laughs> uh um well this is we are almost drawing to the end of the session so uh, maybe i would just uh, quickly recap uh, for you all the thing in terms of uh, uh, you know how do you connect to the question so when you say take an example of a topic and frame titles for titles for all the types of researchers what would Mira, can you say what do you mean by types of researches? Uh, are you say because the primary types would be the qualitative, quantitative, mixed methods. Uh, these would be the primary types. You can also call the mixed methods something that is a fancier word to use is quant qual. Yeah, yeah. So this is. Uh, 
so if so i was actually trying to do that with ajay's uh, question yes quantitative i got that so if i have a question like r um, okay let's do this um let's take the third topic and uh, focus on that because i'm right so this question is asking how has it helped right you want to find out how has it helped now if i am dealing with this as a topic i what would i want to do is i want to find out who has used it for learning so for learning in what contexts have they used it i'm i'm giving you certain questions and then doing in what contexts have they used it so it could be that they have i'm stating that it could be private public it could be that homeschooling was used it could be that uh uh um, it was in rural areas government area so what were the contexts that they have used it right um uh, it could be a question on how much uh of the tlm was based on social media right these are useful questions to have now my question to you all is if this is how i outline the sub questions these are my sub questions this is what i want to find out how has social media in uh, helped i want to find out who used it in what context have they used it how much of it have they used it and then i have another question did they did teachers and students find social media useful so basically my question here is what was their attitude to social media right okay we'll just put it here do i need to use a uh, qualitative methods for this part do i have to use qualitative have to is a question must must use qualitative method can i do this with a quantitative aspect can i just do a survey can i do a multiple choice can i do one survey form where i have are you a teacher are you a parent are you a student drop down box in what context in you know multiple choice uh, uh, and multiple select where i can look at it in terms of things um Uh, you know where i say are you in government schools rural areas uh, private schools you know elite whatever i can do that how much of the tlm was based on it so can i ask that of your learning uh, you know what is a percentage that you used of social media in your learning or how what was a percentage you used it in your teaching and they declare it in terms of 60% 40% for whatever or i can ask the teacher to share lesson plans and say uh, and then device that this was the um, percentage and then did teachers what did they find it useful yes no or a likert scale very useful useful some somewhat useful not useful not at all useful something of that sort can i answer these questions using just quantitative methods and that's the point right now my questions don't really justify uh in this case my sub questions and the way i'm forming it don't really justify using a qualitative method what will i have to do 
to answer these kinds of questions is I take the same thing. I repeat it. And I now what will be the kind of questions that I will want to do? If I want to use qualitative, how will I frame them? Why uh, did the teachers or students find social media useful? Yes. I will frame the same question of how much of TLM was used in the social media. But I will also frame it by asking if I'm doing a document study, how was it used? Not how much. How much, you see, becomes a title of qualification. Quanti uh, qualifier. So I won't use how much, but how was the TLM based on social media? Just this word, striking out this, will change the way that I'm looking at. This question, how was the TLM used, cannot be only quantitative. It will have to do a study, a it could be descriptive and therefore qualitative, quantitative, but largely will be how was it used. So do you get how words themselves just by adding or deleting can change it in terms of the elements? Uh, yes, Mira, studying the reflections of the teachers, not did you find it useful, but as Anjali also said, how did you find it useful? Therefore, I need them to be writing quoting, typing, speaking, interviews, FGDs, uh, open-ended questions, all of these become my question. How did you find it useful? So that would be how I make it qualitative. Now, if I have both these questions together in, in a sense, and I want to identify them, then I go in and I say, I will use a mixed methods. Mixed methods would basically be to justify, do I have this kind of a question or that? That would be it, right? I'm obviously just taking something that's plotted, but this is the overview of how you will try and frame it. So you need to have framed your aim very carefully in terms of, did you, did you in your aim mention something that says you want to understand how they did something. And so I'm going to go back here and ask, like, why and how? Did that come through in the aim that you were writing about the research? Did the what come through in the aim that you're writing about the research? So if your question is to find out if government schools give better learning outcomes than private schools, I don't need to find out how. I can just do a quantitative. If my aim is to say, if government schools uh, provide better learning outputs, and why, or what are the kinds of enablers that are there, I can then perhaps justify a qualitative or a mixed methods study. So it would have to be that way. I hope that comes in, <laughs> yes. We have uh, just about five uh, to eight minutes. So if there are other questions, uh, then please do uh, state. I am just uh, identifying that your uh, research to a large extent, the way that you would write your chapter would be, uh, Okay, uh, what you would write in terms of steps, if I have to uh, mention that, is um, is that, okay, the feedback for the form of the link, all right, that's fine. Uh, so you would actually be writing what your research is about. You'll be trying to connect it to you know, the method and say about what is it that you will talk about, right? Overall, you will have, and I maybe can share a link. Uh, will this uh, be, 
yeah i think i can share this this is one of a few aspects that you can have in terms of a research methodology and uh, what i will do is i will uh, put this in out here so you can see the topic right uh, also to give you something that you can do this is on scribber scribber is also useful for you to have your apa reference generator or anything some minor proofreading and so on and so forth so you can look at those as tools uh you can and you are supposed to and we have talked about how you have collected or how you analyzed your data but your research method how you analyze your data will primarily come in your data analysis what are the methods you you'll use for data analysis can come here why would you use for instance one of the things that we talked about was tools i'm sorry i missed that part but you also will have to be talking about what was the data analysis method you used that can be brought into research methods or it can be brought into your data analysis uh, element also it can be explained better there but data analysis methods as to why you used an anova test and why you used a t test or why you used uh, you know what kind of coding did you do will come in in those elements but that largely also can be based placed in your data analysis chapter now what do you do as your first one is explain your methodological approach this is where i was talking about quantitative qualitative or mixed methods and how you decide it is dependent on what kind of data you chose okay so was it a practical theoretical problem why why is this the most suitable approach is this a standard methodology or not all these points we have covered but this is what you will write in your first step second you will describe your methods of data collection and the selection that you have for instance where and how you took forth and you know how did you select the participants this also we discussed what was the sample size what was the response rate right all these will be the things why did you use a phone and why did you not do this yes uh, one second i'll just put this on the chat as well that's a good point so yes uh this is the um welcome no i meant to give a few more links so i will share them with imaya and uh, you can look at them also but this is a very simple you know statement of an overview of what comes in it's the most simple one that i could find uh you know give the details write about the existing data that you already referred to in terms of secondary research where did you find it and then you you could and so each of the methods basically they have said what it is so you explain the data collection now you describe your method of analysis uh you know whether you so basically here it is more than the analysis it is the tools you used for the analysis so did you use masqda did you do atlas t uh did you access atlas t now in a tis research thesis they generally will be happy if you just say atlas t because atlas t is available but if you're writing for an international journal or you're writing for any other journal then you also have to say why atlas t you know uh atlas t because it is open source uh or atlas t because it is uh, allowing you for quantitative data something you would have to say why spss uh why not r which will also allow you to do it and r is open source so those kinds of uh, you know it could be one sentence what i'm talking about is one sentence of explanation but that sentence is important as to uh, what you did so which software you used or which statistical methods you used and uh, if you go to spss or stata to their site a lot of reasons of you can actually quote from there the statistical methods this is actually one of the easier parts because this you actually do when you are doing your research methods generally this is just short and not too long a paragraph um only if you're using very unconventional methods will this become long every time that it's unconventional you better explain yourself so um quantitative content analysis categorizing is it narrative analysis is it discourse analysis so discourse analysis generally people don't really uh, look too much but uh, you could be uh, if you're trying to talk about uh, 
you know policy makers way of talking about policy then you may have a discourse analysis that could come in there um and then evaluating and justifying your methodological choices this is exactly what we did today and i hope that was useful and i realize that time is up so uh, imaya over to you i yeah thank you anusha thanks a lot uh like personally it has been like really helpful listening to you to write my thesis and i hope it's been the same for all of us uh we'll write to you if participants have more questions please sure. do write to us and we'll definitely collate that and when you have time we can have more yeah. interactions sure for sure thank you anusha